morning. morning. Sorry if that's a little loud. But anyway. <laughs> Welcome to Pedestal United Methodist Church. Here are some opportunities for you to join us living out your faith this week. Leads are in need of supplies, specifically peanut butter, boxed potatoes, and jelly. Donate them in the gray boxes either in Beeson Hall or the Narthex. Please sign up for our blood drive on Sunday, September 10th. You can do it right now by scanning the QR code on the screen. Uh, Versity will be collecting the blood and all their donations stay within the local community. Sunday school will be led by Emma next week after the service. Please bring your children and grandchildren so they can be blessed by her ministry. Sign up for coverage for the street fair. You will be helping Summit Station when needed and watching the church grounds for safety concerns. Be on the lookout for school supplies. We'll be collecting items for our Operation Christmas Child Shoebox Ministry. The goal this year is to make 100 boxes, 50 from individual families, and 50 from the church. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us in worship this morning. God has brought you here for a reason. It is an honor and a privilege to be your pastor. Jesus calls, come get out of the boat. Take that step of faith. Jesus calls, even if you think you're not good enough, come be my disciples. Don't just sit there, do something. It is tempting to think, if we get out of the boat, we're going to sink. But keep your eyes on the Lord and he will sustain you. Um, we'll be called out of the boat this week. I've been given a lot of fair warning about the street fair. So, <laughs> apparently we need to order barricades because it sounds like it's a zombie apocalypse or something. But, uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, uh, that being said, uh, my lovely wife took Mr. Dave Beeson here this morning. Uh, there are sign-ups so that way you could take him um, Sunday mornings so he could be here and worship with us. I'd like to get some more names on this list. Can you just call him last night, Saturday night and make sure he's ready to go and then pick him up. No hassle. Because if no one else signs up, then I'm going to drive him and that won't go well. I'm not a good driver. So please, <laughs> please pass this around and sign up to take him if you can. That being said, I, I also have an announcement to make uh, on more serious concerns uh, regarding the Hub family. They have asked me to announce this to you. I'm sure many of you have gotten your email yesterday, uh, just or two days ago, concerning his health. Um, he passed away yesterday morning, and uh, it is with great sadness, but we know where he is. He is with his Lord, and although our hearts are filled with grief, for the second week, uh, we know he is in a better place, that there is no pain, and uh, he's probably playing some solos up in heaven, worshiping and praising the Lord. We just get a little glimpse of what the praises of heaven are like here in this earth and in this time, but I can imagine, I can only imagine what he is experiencing with our Lord. That being said, let us center our thoughts today. <coughs> Failure may be disheartening, but it provides valuable lessons and opportunities for personal development. Failure is not a sign of weakness, but rather a stepping stone towards success. On the other hand, those who choose to do nothing out of fear or complacency miss out on the effort that would allow them to grow. Take action and make a difference despite the fear of failure. It is the resilience and determination of these individuals that sets them apart. So let us not be afraid of failures, for they are roadmaps guiding us toward our true potential. The words of Martin Lloyd-Jones summarize Peter's walking on water in faith. People who try to do something and fail are infinitely better than those who try to do nothing and succeed. Let us prepare for our time of worship. Thank <laughs>
rise if you're able. Join me for the call of worship using select verses from Psalm 105. Give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, make known among the nations what he has done. Those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord in his strength. He is, the he is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He remembers his covenant forever. The promise he made for a thousand generations. Rejoice in his goodness, rely on his power in all things, and it is in his name we pray. Amen. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. At this time, we will have a moment of silent prayer. Then I will lead us in prayer, 
And then we'll close with the Lord's Prayer. I'll say the phrase that you see on the screen here together as we pray one prayer and one voice in one church. And then we'll pray the Lord's Prayer together using trespasses and using uh, the long breath. So, silent prayer, pastoral prayer, everybody prayer, Lord's Prayer. Okay? Let us pray. Good morning, Lord. It is a joy to be in your house. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. Lord, that might have been the first moments of silence we've got to have this past week. Lord, it is busy, and we confess, O oh God, that we oftentimes think about you last. Oftentimes, O oh God, we confess you get the crumbs of our time. Whereas the lesser things get the chunk of it. We confess, O oh God, we often look to our own strength, or the strength of others instead of yours. We often think, O oh God, there's no way we can walk on the water, or if we can, it's by our own power and our own ingenuity. Lord, whenever we come against adversity or any form of difficulty, we often give up, because the idols in which we cling to are not strong enough to get us through. Help us not to fear. Help us to be courageous. Instead of our hearts being filled with terror or anxiety, help them to be full of faith. You are our God. You will strengthen us. You will help us. You will guide us through the fires. You will lead us through the waters. Help us to trust that you will provide for us just as you provided for your church through all ages. So, oh Lord, we take this time to honor you, to look to you. Give us comfort uh, for those who are mourning. Give us strength to those who are weak. Provide healing for those uh, who need it. Lord, for many who are going to school, whether as students, teachers, or facilitators, or therapists, uh, provide a special blessing to them, help them get back into the routine and do all the odds and ends that need to get done. Be with all our parents as well and all the papers that need to be signed and written and passed along, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity that our children can get an education and we thank you for all those who provide that education or make that education possible. Lord, be with all our first responders this week. Be with all those who protect us this week. We ask for a safe week as this street fair commences, Lord. Give us patience. Give us fruit of the Spirit. Give us joy. Even when things get difficult and those hot and sweaty days come and our patience are, is put to the test, help us to not be afraid and to step out in faith and share the good news of your gospel. Hear us together as we pray one prayer in one voice one church. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The richness of God's mercy is poured over us every minute of our lives, even when we least expect it. We offer our gifts and tithes and gratitude for all that God does for us and with us, that we might become better servants of the gospel. Thank you. 
this song isn't very long, but it has a really good message, and I'm, I'm proud to be um, singing it for you. And I ask God's blessing on you. From the beginning of this old world, man has shed a million tears. Tears for the pain they've had in their lives, and for all the wasted years. But the saddest tears that ever fell were not from just any man's eyes, but they were shed by my Savior, and they stained the sands of time. And as the Father sunshine and meadow, we present these offerings as tokens of our lives and grateful praise for your love for us. Use these gifts for the ministries of hope and justice in this, your broken world. We ask this in Jesus' name. scriptures together. Bring your understanding and reveal your truth. Open our minds, hearts, and souls to understand all these words of life that are offered to us. We long to be continually challenged, transformed, encouraged, and renewed by your word. May we hear your voice of life as we read and draw close to you. Amen. We are continuing our scripture reading through uh, Matthew chapter 14. Last week, Jesus fed the 5,000, and now we move on to the next scene. Immediately happening right afterwards, Matthew tells us. So, Matthew 14, verses 22 through 20, 33. Immediately, he made the disciples get into a boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. 
For by this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came walking toward them from on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and saying, It's a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You have little faith. Why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Uh, notice Jesus commands the disciples to get into the boat. It's one of the few times the disciples actually listen to what Jesus was saying. <laughs> and Mark gives us a little bit of a picture. Remember those who are in our Mark Bible study. Uh, Mark gives little incidental details. And as Jesus was commanding them and dismissing the people, the disciples got into their boat and kept going. And of course, what did Jesus do? Can someone answer me? What did Jesus do when the disciples were in the boat? Pray. pray. He went on a mountainside to pray. Amen. And notice it was probably right before sundown when he prayed, about six o'clock. And the disciples went out onto the sea, and they were probably in the middle of the sea, and they started shaking, you know? Got windy, the disciples were afraid, and then, well, okay, first off, the boat was floating. No surprise there, right? The boat was floating. Everyone expects a boat to float. But then, they saw Jesus floating. And that was a shock, because they were wondering, what is this? Is it a phantom? And they were surprised to see him floating on the water. They didn't even know it was truly him. And what does Peter do? He said, well, he, he wanted to make sure, right? <laughs> Lord, if it was really you, have me walk on the water. People were surprised. They were not expecting Peter to walk on the water. But you know what? He did. And that showed that Peter, by faith, could trust in Jesus, the Son of God. In the same way, have faith that Jesus will carry you. Have faith that Jesus will carry you. That's the key point of our sermon today. And you notice, I had to have faith that this bowling ball would float. <laughs> Otherwise, that would have been a very poor sermon illustration. But hopefully, it will remind you. Whenever you see a bowling ball, it will remind you that trust in Jesus. Have faith that Jesus will carry you. Plus, you can impress all your friends. Have faith that Jesus will carry you. Jesus commanded them to get into the boats while he dismissed the crowd, and then he went to the mountainside and prayed. Once again, for those of us introverted people, it's important to go on the mountainside and pray. It's good to have that quiet time and pray. We're all called to have those quiet times of prayer. And notice, it was probably around 6 o'clock when Jesus started praying, right? About sundown. And when did he stop praying? When did they see him on the water? Well, they probably saw him around, around sunrise, uh, verse uh, 26. They probably saw him around sunrise. So let's just say Jesus was praying for about 12 hours. 12 hours. Some of us have struggled to pray for 12 minutes. 
But that's because it shows Jesus was devoted in prayer. Beloved, if you struggle praying, you can always take a chapter of the Psalms and pray it. There's so many prayers on the internet, you can just Google and pray them. Use them as a starting spot. You can take any chapter of Scripture and pray through it. Um, we are called to be people of prayer. I once had a gentleman, I do a lot of silent prayer during the service, and especially before communion. That gentleman once said, wow, that, that silent time was way too long. <laughs> As Martin Luther once said, if I had uh, the time to confess all my sins, we wouldn't have enough time to be here, right? And it made me question, well, how long is your silent time of prayer at home if two minutes is too long to sit in silence? Um, beloved, we're called to be on the mountainside and pray. God doesn't wait for us to have perfect faith. God didn't wait for Peter. To have perfect faith. God didn't wait for the disciples to have perfect faith. They're terrified. Their hearts are filled with fear as the storm shakes the boat. And they see someone walking on the water. They thought Jesus was a phantasma. That's the Greek. You all know what the word is in English. A phantom. They thought Jesus was a phantom. This was their fear. But beloved, we have similar fears. It can be our first reaction to be afraid. Uh, when I was younger, I would be afraid to be in the basement in the dark. I didn't know what was there. Uh, we might have fears of the dark. We might have fears. I, I don't. I don't know what they could be. I know for me, when I was serving at a church, the parsonage was right next to the church, and. I don't know if you've ever been to a church in the dark. It can be a little scary sometimes. <laughs> or a graveyard in the, in the dark. There was a graveyard really close to the parsonage. And, and I would be terrified. But Jesus, if Jesus is for us, who can be against us, Paul says in Romans 8. If Jesus bled and died for your sins, if his blood has stained the sands of time and you are purchased by him, you have nothing to fear. Uh, especially in the spiritual realm. You have nothing to fear. You have nothing to fear. Demonic activity or whatever you think might be attacking you, if you are in Christ, you have nothing to fear. If God is for you, who can be against you? I had a friend who, was, who called me and was so worried that he thought of someone placed a curse on his family member. I said, you have nothing to be afraid of. Let's get rid of that curse right now. Let's pray in the name of Jesus. And we prayed for a while, just praying that this, whatever happened to this person would be removed. You know, we have nothing to fear. Ghost stories, haunted houses, lose their fear when you realize you belong to Jesus. We have no fear because of the I am. The I am is with you. Charles Haddon Spurgeon put it this way. He was often called the Prince of Preachers. He said, Believer, Jesus says to you, I am. I am. Is your wife dead? Is your child to be buried? Have your possessions failed? Is your health departing? Are your joys declining? Alas, it is a dying, fleeting world, but there is one who is always the same. For Jesus says to you, I am. And because I live, you shall live also. Be comforted. Whatever else is gone, wherever else the arrows of death may fly, your Jesus still lives. Do we have confidence in the I am? Faith does not save us from trials and tribulations. We will have difficulties in this life. But what faith does is it gives us strength to face them. The person who has faith has a source of strength and inspiration, especially when trouble strikes. It's not us keeping the faith. It's the faith that keeps us, so to speak. Will you have faith during moments of trials and difficulties? Will you have faith when God is calling you to take another step, whether it be a career change, whether it be ending a career in retirement, whether it be undergoing surgery, whether it be moving, whether
whether it be quitting an addiction, whether it be starting a diet or starting an exercise program, whether it be adopting new behaviors or changing your schedule or being on a church committee, oh Lord have mercy. <laughs> Are you willing to step out in faith? Do you truly believe? You know, do you truly believe that Jesus is the pilot? You know, more, more accidents happen in cars. There's a higher likelihood that you'll have an accident in a car than being in a plane. Do you truly trust the pilot? Do you trust Jesus as the pilot of your soul? Do you believe that he will carry you over whatever sea you have. Here in our passage, the same God who parted the Red Sea and called Moses and the Israelites to walk through is the same God who called Peter to walk on water and is the same God who calls you to walk in faith. Whatever challenges may befall you, will you answer the call? Will you walk in faith? The ancient understanding of our gospel shows us the power of faith. It shows us what Jesus always does for his people. When the wind is against them and they are in danger of being overwhelmed by the storms of life, to those with faith, Jesus isn't a ghost. Jesus is the Son of God. Notice what do the disciples do when Jesus gets in the boat and the wind and waves are calm? What do they do? Yes, and then they say that, obviously true. What do they do to him? W, start with a W. They worship him. Jesus accepts their worship. The whole point of this passage points to Jesus, the God-man. To those with faith, Jesus isn't a ghost. He's not a genie in a bottle. He is the Son of God who is present with us and whose grace upholds us when things are too much for us. Catherine uh, McKinney and Catherine Turner says this, there are times for all of us when our faith seems strong and we can feel like we can do anything. But the fact remains, when the storms hit and the doubts set in, we can feel that we are sinking beneath the waves. Our faith is tested to its limits. We can feel overwhelmed. It takes huge trust to continue, reaching out into the darkness and storm, hoping that Jesus will be there to hold us safe. Beloved, have you encountered Jesus in the storm of your life? My pastor would always put it, Pastor Sal Unicor, he would say, you're either in a trial or you're about to be in a trial. <laughs> and it's true. If you're not in, in one, thank God. And be ready to trust in Jesus during the storm of life. Maybe you're in one, maybe you're in the middle of one. You're in what uh, St. John of the Cross calls the dark night of the storm, the dark night of the cross. Amen. Will you trust that Jesus is with you and he will help you walk through it? Beloved, as Martin Lloyd-Jones said, it's better to try and fail than to not try and succeed. How will you deal with the storms of your faith? What will you cling to? Who will take the place of Jesus, or will Jesus be center stage? Will you let Jesus pilot your life? And will you walk out in faith? Notice Peter says, verse 28, if it is you. The Apostle Peter had doubts. It's okay to have doubts. Maybe you're a new Christian. Maybe you're thinking about being a Christian. And maybe you look at the waters of life and go, I, I, I haven't made a decision for Christ yet. Peter has doubts, but what does Peter do? He, he addresses those doubts. He asks questions. He asks a question. Is it really you, Jesus? In fact, the center of Christianity hinges on that question. Is it really you, Jesus? Did he really come? Did he really die? Did he really rise again? Peter doubted, and yet... His doubts were answered. It wasn't just Thomas who doubted, beloved. Peter did too. If it is you, beloved, it is okay to doubt. There are times where I wrestle with scripture. 
I don't fully understand it, but you know what? I just don't sit there. I, I investigate. I look into things. People will ask me questions in our Bible studies. I have no idea what the answers are. <laughs> don't tell them I said that. <laughs> Sometimes we do. But you know what? You investigate. You look into it. Sometimes I'll say, I don't know the true answer, but my hunch is this. Sometimes we're not even given the answer in the text. You have to just guess or just assume God knows what he's doing. That's what Peter did. Why am I pointing this out? Beloved, you might have doubts. That's okay. But don't just sit in your doubts. Ask questions. Investigate the faith. And I truly believe if you search for the truth, you will find it. I truly believe wherever God guides, God will provide. May you have faith that Jesus can carry you. Let's have faith that Jesus will call us and carry us when times get hard. Let's have faith that Jesus will carry us in this moment. We'll see.
it's your turn. May you please stand and sing our closing hymn, 467, let's really mean it. Trust and obey. stop you. Place your trust in God's love and step out in faith. Go into the world in peace, confident of God's presence and love for all creation. Jesus will be with us always to the very end of the age. Amen. God bless and have a great week.